beloved brethren it is just a few days ago that we celebrated christmas and one of the main themes behind the writers of the gospels in reference to christmas is the theme of epiphany where jesus manifests himself as the son of god and as the person in whom god's love is to be shown to humanity now in this manifestation of jesus we see the first manifestation is to the shepherds who are watching their sheep when the angels tell them a child is born he is the joy of the world go and worship him and they are the first ones who see the lord in the manger then we have the story of the kings the three kings who follow the star who have been invited by the lord to worship the king themselves and they go to the king of kings in that lovely little grotto that cave in which he chose to be born today we see the third manifestation in the gospel reading about the call of the first two apostles andrew and john we see this invitation once again from the lord to come and see come and see i don't have to tell you anything special just come and see come and stay with me remain in me the word that is used many times in this paragraph is menein in greek which means remain in me remaining this uh, same word is found in the same gospel when the writer of the gospel speaks about the wine and the branches same word actually in chapter 15 of st john it is found 15 times in that one chapter menein to remain to stay with jesus to experience the reality of jesus that's the invitation that comes to each and every one of his disciples and that same word is found strangely though in john chapter 6 which is the eucharistic discourse where jesus invites his disciples to eat him eat his body and drink his blood that will give them eternity the christian community has always cherished the beauty of this sacrament the sacrament of unity with the lord in the eucharist and the eucharist is at the center of the church without the eucharist there is no christian you may have hundreds of prayers and prayers and prayers hundreds of readings and sermons and this and that and everything unless you experience and you enter into profound communion with jesus in the eucharist there is no discipleship because the lord jesus wanted us to remain in him all the time to taste him and see how he is the lord of the universe but who had become human who had incarnated himself in our reality in the reality of human life with all its ups and downs failures and successes shortcomings with our fragilities all the time we are aging and becoming older and older the lord wants us to be part of his life with the eucharist he is inviting us to join him saint augustine says when we receive holy communion it is not the lord who comes inside us but it is the lord who becomes in whose life we become part we are ennobled in the eucharist we are made to become more than what we are 
as that hymn by Josh Garban says, more than what I am. You know, he wants you, each and every one of you and me to become part of his life. That is the invitation. So these two disciples, he's inviting them to come and see, come and experience the Lord. And it is so much that in this same paragraph, we say, we hear that the disciples stayed with him, not just for one or two hours, but the whole day. And it is said that they stayed with him till the very end of his life. Faithful disciples. Not only did they stay with him their life, they wanted others to also become part of that story, part of that beautiful experience of being with the Lord. So, Andrew goes to his brother, because Andrew probably wished his brother all the best. So he went to his brother and told him, we have met the Messiah. We have experienced him, we have seen him, we have touched him, we have beheld him. Come and taste him yourself. And he brings him to the Lord, it is said. The mission starts with that experience. Our mission to bring other people to the Lord starts there in our communion with the Lord. That is why the life of the church is in this Eucharist. The Eucharist is at the center of the church, of this community. The life-giving life of the Lord. He wants us to taste himself, to be part of himself, to join him in his mission, and to be ennobled from our weak, fragile human nature. So this remaining in the Lord, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. And without me, you can do nothing. In gospel, the same gospel, uh, chapter 15, those words are key words of community. Where the Lord says, if you are not with me, you cannot bear fruit. And it's, it is said here, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without that communion, you can achieve nothing in life. The words he uses there is, Por is emu, without me. U do not stay, you are not able. For ye in to do, anything, Udain. You cannot do anything without me. So, the invitation is very clear. Dear sisters, your congregation and many other congregations that God has in his providence created for us, the church, your sisters are bound by three important things. One is confessio trinitatis, as Vita Consacrata very clearly mentions. And that is, confess your faith in the Lord. Your whole life is confessio trinitatis. Your whole life is an expression of the Holy Trinity and the communion that should exist in the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. When you walk in the streets of Colombo, you are walking with the confessio trinitatis in your self, marked out that the people see the Holy Trinity in you. And then, communio fraternitatis, this communion, fraternal communion, first with the Lord and then with your brothers and sisters, communio. Communio is part of the very life of the church. The, the Lord Jesus invited us to be in communion with him and gave us the sacrament of that communion, which is the Eucharist. So every time we receive the Eucharist, we are ennobled to become more than what we are, thanks to his mercy and love. And therefore, you become, each one of you, an expression of that communio fraternitatis. Now, my dear sisters, 
It is providence that created your congregation. And it is God's providence that they sent them, sent you to our country, to Sri Lanka. And it is God's providence that you built all these service centers and you have served our poor people, our elderly people, those who are in need of love and care. You have become the manifestation of the Eucharistic love that the Lord has for every one of us. Jesus Christ is the expression of God's love. We know that. He was born in the manger, a poor man. He opted to be poor. He opted to be among those who are suffering. His father was a poor carpenter. His mother was a simple housewife. In that family, he chose to be born. And he was born in the most difficult circumstances you can imagine. That somebody goes for the childbirth into a grotto, cave, without a place to sleep, without a place to have a cot for the baby, but only the manger for the cot. All of this are optional choices of the Lord to show that he is with the poor. And then he lived a life of the poor. He must have helped his father Joseph in the carpentry. He would have been with the others as a young man. And then you see him from the very start of his mission up to the very end, a mendicant preacher going from place to place. Not even a place to lay his head, he said once. And he had no time to eat even. Gospel of Mark chapter 3 says that they, are, they had no time to eat. So he spent his whole life for the people. And then he died the most ignominious death that anybody could face in that time. The most cruel form of death imposed on criminals was crucifixion and he chose to die on the cross. All of this for the sake of the manifestation of God's love for us. And he invited us to climb the cross with him, to be part of the Eucharistic sacrifice that he celebrated on the cross when he gave his life for us. And he wants us to be the manifestation of that love for our brothers and sisters as Christians. Our Christianity is useless if it is only words. It has to be manifested in the way we love our brothers and sisters and make a commitment for them. Where there is suffering and pain, where there is injustice, where there is no voice for the voiceless people, the church, especially the hierarchy, including the sisters, must be there. Their struggle is there. Where the Lord is experiencing pain the most, we have to be there. Nudhavangetra la, mea chadwadi ravu, lesser don't esra avek le pauvre, komla senior afe anu. Alor, merci boku pour le service que vous avez donné à nous au Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for the service that you have rendered in being Eucharist to our people. Being Eucharist, being the expression of God's love. Just like Jesus Christ became the expression of God's love on the cross, hanging on the cross. He showed how much God loved us. We have to become like that always. Our ecclesiastical robes mean nothing to us. Our, these things that we wear, these are useless things, you know. Throw them away. If you are not with the poor, if you are not with the suffering, if you are not with the persecuted, if you are not on the side of right, justice, truth, then you are not a Christian. Your communion with the Lord, your Eucharist is only just a formality. 
that's all if you are not with the poor if you are with the on the side of the exploiters on the side of the people who exploit others for their own personal glory then you are not with the lord then you are not eucharistic that is what is important the lord wants us to be to taste him join him be part of him be part of the mission that he himself came on earth to fulfill so hermana muchas gracias por el servicio que vosotros han realizado en esta misión gracias i thank you sisters for the wonderful mission of being eucharist to our people to these elderly people you know they are lonely perhaps their children have left them and gone away they have no one to love them you become the expression of god's love to them you become the eucharist to these people the living eucharist the touchable eucharist that's what you have to be be joyful in the sacrifices you make because you are joining the lord on the cross every time you make a sacrifice for your brothers and sisters whom you serve this is the noblest ideal that anybody could aspire for to give one's life in the imitation of jesus christ that is the greatest way in which you can be the eucharist to your people so be the eucharist always to your people and experience the lord in your own life as profoundly as possible because the lord said come and see may god bless you to realize that always amen